Hey everyone, so I would like to show you another little MegaWare app that I made. It's called Flickring and it's free and open source. Uh, I'd like to show you how it works, but also show you a bit of how I made it because I built it mostly with the AI powered uh, code editor called Cursor, which was uh, new to me, but um, yeah, we'll see. But first off, how did we get here? So. One of my favorite creators is uh, Ali from Optimum Tech. He does sort of tech reviews, also just shows off how he's probably like the closest thing we get to a real life uh, Bruce Wayne. He's like super jacked, he lives in a cave, he builds his own gear, he drives a sick ass car, like even his like imaginary virtual car is probably <laughs> twice as cool as my wag ass family car. If he even beats up some criminals in the weekends, I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, I trust Ali's judgment. He has like great taste in tech products. I have the audio interface that he recommends, the gaming keyboard, a PC case, and uh, I don't know, man, I would like marry him <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> He's a cool dude. So when I saw that he made his own kind of mouse like and it looked weird like there's barely any mouse if Ali is onto this I have to try it but like there were so many questions how, how do you even hold it turns out there's something called fingertip grip I didn't even know there were different kinds of grip I just held the mouse and got on with it I guess but uh like how getting an ortholinear keyboard taught me like force taught me to learn proper touch typing this force taught me to use finger style grip and uh, now i use it for all my gaming and it's nice and it's great and it's fun and it's it feels kind of nice i mean the promise holds that it's like very light it barely weighs anything there's like barely any mouse so uh, i'm glad i did it and and i still trust uh, ali's advice but that's gaming, right? But can you also use it for work? Like I only have this workstation. I use this uh, same monitor for my uh, Mac work and my PC gaming. I use the same keyboard. I was about to say, but I actually don't. But I use the same mouse at least. And I didn't want to switch my mice all the time. Um, but I was used to the uh, the Logitech uh, Superlight that has the you know, thumb side buttons to go back and forward in my browser. And I don't have any spare buttons now, but I had an idea for how to maybe fix this. Let me show it to you. So this is flickering. You don't see it because it lives up here in your status bar. I don't know why, but that's apparently my kind of app. They just all, all live in the status bar. It looks like this. And you activate it by holding your um, chosen mouse button. I chose the like clicking the wheel because I don't have much else. But so you click it and hold it and flickering appears. And it has four actions. So there's north, south, west, east. If you activate these areas and let go, it's gonna perform an action that you can, can, you can configure. I have it configured, like I said, to go back and forth in my browser. So if I just like activate it and flick, you can see it's very it's a very fast interaction. It's, I've mapped up and down to uh, scroll, which can go slow like this. And this is sort of a special case where uh, holding it triggers the action already. So you can, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense if, when you use it. No comment. Here are the settings. You can configure what mouse button to use. You can make it do all these things, like do nothing. You can send a key, which is how I send the back and forward. It's just by sending command a square bracket, open and close. Scroll up and down are these special cases, but you can also trigger it to send another mouse button action. So you can turn one mouse button into four, I guess. <laughs> or you can open a URL, meaning you can uh, make it do the Raycast confetti thing, for example. There's even a, a theme picker. 
So I have it on the system setting, which is which matches the window background for dark light mode. But there's a rainbow option, which I kind of like, and there's also the um, uh, color options matching macOS's uh, built in. What? Why is it? Okay. Appearance settings. And you can, of course, like choose to launch it and login. And then that's it. But like I said, I built most of this with the uh, AI powered code editor called Cursor. So usually when you make macOS apps, you are in Xcode. And I was as well for like building and previewing, but I wanted to try Cursor out and specifically try its Composer view, which is something that I hadn't tried before. It's basically like a chat GBT, but it knows your code and you can tell it to write code as well. So you just type in the box, make it pop and it'll like suggest code and you can suggest all the changes. I recorded some footage while I was uh, actually doing it while I was building the theme uh, selector. Uh, so uh, yeah, let me show some of it to you. Let's, uh, I thought it would be nice if, if the theme selector had these tiny uh, previews of the colors, like uh, the system settings has. So let's try and add that with uh, our good pal cursor. So right now I have it like a cursor on one side and then um, my uh, Swift UI uh, preview from Xcode over here. And um, yes, so we have the general pane open and we uh, go with if we can do open composer. Yes, let's reset it. Uh, let's command R, tell it. Uh, I think it would be nice if our theme selector had a tiny previews uh, next to the th ah, theme names, just like uh, tiny ten by ten. Uh, squares with the uh, colors maybe a radial gradient for rainbow option then the robot just certainly is it <laughs> I don't know what it is I gotta teach it to not say like start every every single response with certainty <laughs> but Okay, that way. So usually I just like, if it's a small change, just go with it, press save all. Not accept yet because uh, if like, like now it doesn't work and we get into like a complete mess, we can just uh, reject all. So just for something that has previews, a small visual change or something, save all is, is great. Okay, so it doesn't work. I know that uh, the pickers, the Swift Drive pickers, have uh, sort of a limitation. Um, so let's tell it that. I think uh, maybe Swift UI pickers uh, have some limitation. Mm. At least the uh, colors don't show. You're right. Thank you, robot. I am sometimes right. Okay, it spits out a whole thing. Let's uh, save all. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. Gotta, gotta treat your robot right and give it some compliments when it needs, when it deserves them. Um, for the system one, uh, can we make it um, sort of uh, diagonally dark light to indicate? <sighs> Dark and light mode, I guess. Certainly, <laughs> it's the certainly machine. That's gonna be the new name, cursor. Oh, I as I call it, the certainly machine. 
like that. Exactly like that. So, okay, it's a bit weird that uh, these are rounded rectangles, but the gradient one is round. And this one is round. Okay, so do we want rounded rectangles for all of them? For the rainbow? Or do we want all of these to be round? I mean, the I guess the UI itself is round, so let's make them all round. Uh, make all the uh, rounded rects, uh, circles instead. Certainly! <laughs> yes. Great. Um, let's have the system one uh, cut diagon is it that diagonal when it's round cut at an angle certainly <laughs> again yes 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 all right, save all, accept all, accept our future as merely, I don't know, man, but this is crazy. I like the video shows. I uh, was pretty amazed at how far you could get with uh, so little, I guess. Composer is like a very talented coder, but with no like taste at all. So <laughs> it's so easy to personify, I guess, or humanize these uh, AI agents, but they, of course, don't have any taste they don't just like they don't have any they don't think it's just like outputs code so you have to guide it along and sometimes for a first pass it's really great many times it's great as is but then other times it'll just like work itself into a corner and just like keep trying the same bad implementation so i don't think that i could have done this without my prior knowledge of making mag apps like specifically uh, for uh, passing through events so uh, this was one of the hardest things about this actually when you show flickering like this center part of the ui that's still part of the app even though you can see through it and you want to set the events there through to the app behind it but to do that I sort of have to capture the, the original event and then create it again. So it's sort of a hacky solution. But in the end, it feels just like any click. Like it still feels like uh, like flickering wasn't even there. And um, Cursor couldn't fix this. Like it had multiple suggestions. It was just wasn't it just wasn't it. And you have to be a human with taste I guess to know when it is and when it isn't uh, still I couldn't have done it this fast without cursor either so yeah it's a really great tool for someone who kind of knows what they're doing but I'm afraid still that um, someone who doesn't you can't just uh, suddenly code anything you want because you have cursor now you still sort of need to know what's going on but for someone who does you can move way faster I guess that's my current take on these things and i guess that's it that's uh flickering i uh, hope you like it if you try it i hope you found this interesting and i'll see you in another one i guess